If you haven't already heard, Andrew Weaver and his Green Party have announced their support for John Horgan's NDP. If you're wondering why this is a big deal, I have a video explaining the situation that I'll link in the description. But in short, a party needs a minimum of 44 seats to have a majority. As it stands, the Liberals are closest at 43, followed by the NDP at 41, and the Greens at 3. But together, they're at 44, a majority. But it's a shaky majority. It could collapse at any time for any of these three reasons. Uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves, though. The Liberals still have the most seats, meaning that Christy Clark is still the Premier, and she doesn't intend on resigning. Unlike a lot of the stories that you see, this isn't necessarily because she has some deranged impression of the political landscape. She knows about the Green NDP agreement and knows she can't keep power. So, following convention, she'll test the confidence of the House, knowing she'll fail. Should the government fail the test of confidence in the House, as seems likely, I would be given the job of Leader of the Opposition. This is done through what are called bills of confidence, major motions by the government like budgets or the speech from the throne. Once they don't pass, it'll be clear that the Liberals can't run a functional minority government, and the Lieutenant Governor can either call another election or, much more likely, ask the NDP to form government. And with Green support, Horgan will have the confidence of the House and assume the role of Premier. So, what does this Green-NDP relationship look like? First of all, it's not a coalition. The NDP will form the government on their own, while the Greens will agree to support any NDP bills of confidence. Why? Because of their confidence and supply agreement. Greens support the NDP, the NDP give the Greens power. So main points. The agreement will stand until the next election, which will be in 2021, because Horgan agrees not to request an early election, unless he loses a vote of confidence. And that probably won't happen, because the Green Party agrees to support all bills of confidence, unless the NDP fail to observe the principle of good faith within this agreement, i.e. be a bunch of c- a bunch of a- be a bunch of meanies. It's also possible that one or two MLAs won't show up to a session, and they'll no longer have a majority to pass these bills. Which is why both parties agree to do everything in their power to ensure that all their MLAs are never absent. So this basically means that the Greens will vote in favor of the NDP on bills of confidence. For any other votes, the Green Party will decide what to support on an issue-to-issue -issue basis. This is a weak majority, but as long as no one does anything stupid, it should last for the usual four-year term. And for these four years, the Greens actually get a lot. First and foremost, official party status. This means more resources, higher salaries, and most importantly, more time during question period. The NDP will also consult the Greens prior to making most major actions, including new legislation and major policy issues. So what have they agreed on so far? Now, I'm going to be talking about these policies as though they're a new platform, but they're not. The NDP still have their own independent platform and goals, and so do the Greens. This list is simply what they've agreed to do together. Government and democracy. The Greens ran on the platform of implementing a proportional voting system. The NDP said they would conduct a referendum on it. And it seems they found a strange middle ground. There will be a referendum during the 2018 municipal elections. But the question won't be if we should have proportional representation, but rather which type we should have. They have agreed to implement the system for the next election. They're also going to place limits on individual campaign contributions and ban corporate and union donations from non-residents of BC. Which sounds like a cop-out to me, but you know, whatever and get ready to pause. They'll also do this. Infrastructure and climate. They'll raise carbon taxes by $5 per year, which is half of what the Green Platform asked for, and expand the tax to include fugitive emissions and slash pile burning, which is exactly what Weaver asked for. He had also called for dropping the Sexy Hydro project altogether, but it seems that he settled for Horgan's plan to submit the project for review by the Utilities Commission. They also agree to do everything they can to stop the Kinder Morgan pipeline, which is under federal control, so it's unclear how successful they could be. Health. For both mental and physical health, they want to put an emphasis on prevention. They aim to reduce the cost of prescription drugs, invest in in-home care for seniors, and expand team-based health care. This means easier access to an array of professionals, from physiotherapists to dietitians, to practitioners, nurses, and pharmacists. They'll also appoint a dedicated minister for mental health and addictions, who will focus on this. Five, four, three, two, and they'll build needed hospitals and schools, which leads us to education and childcare. They want to make post-secondary education more affordable, including these, and fund the retraining for those displaced by automation and changing markets. This plan will also include investments in co-op, apprenticeship, and work experience programs in high school and undergrad programs. They also want to ensure that childcare is accessible for all. Whether or not this means that the Greens will support the NDP's $10 a day childcare is unclear. Economy and affordability. They'll establish the Green Party's plans for an at-arm's length fair wages commission tasked with overseeing regular wage increases with a focus on livable wages. The first minimum wage that they propose must not be lower than the NDP's $15 an hour. They'll also introduce a province-wide poverty reduction strategy to address affordable housing, support for mental health and addictions, and income security. This also includes a basic income pilot program. Alongside increases to the supply of houses, 
they'll take action against the speculative market. They don't say how, but here's how both their platforms looked. They'll also tighten rules and close loopholes to protect good landlords and tenants. They'll also do these things to promote, grow, and protect various industries. And okay, that's that. Just remember, this is only what the NDPs and Greens have agreed to do together. Both our platforms involve a lot more. If you're interested, I have this video here, from before the election, that explains each of the party's platforms. I'd also really appreciate it if you could share this video. And of course, thanks for watching.